Hello, B here, and welcome back to Biology. Today we are jumping into our lesson on class amphibia, or more commonly known as amphibians. <laughs> Get it? Jumping? Seriously though, did you know that amphibians are what scientists call indicator species? Indicator species are animals, like amphibians, that are the first to be affected by changes to the environment and pollution. Scientists use indicator species to study climate change. We will be studying this more in the PDF, but it is something to keep in mind as we learn about these fascinating creatures in this video. But before we get started, let's look at our goals for this lesson. By the end, you'll be able to identify the key characteristics of amphibians, compare and contrast the different orders of class amphibia. If you recall during our reptiles lesson, we learned that reptiles evolved from amphibians to be the first terrestrial animal. In today's lesson, let's take a step back in time to learn about amphibians. Amphibians are the bridge between land animals and aquatic animals and have a mix of characteristics from both. One example of this is that they have four legs, not fins but must live near or in water because their skin must stay moist at all times. Some other key characteristics of these organisms are that they are ectothermic and oviparous. The word amphibian actually translates to living a double life in Greek. This name is perfect for these animals because they have two distinct stages in their life cycle starting life as an aquatic organism before transitioning to becoming terrestrial adults. Between the two stages, the animal goes through a metamorphosis or transformation. We will be spending some time in the PDF of this lesson learning more about this amazing and unique life process. For the rest of this lesson, we will be focusing on the three main orders that make up class amphibia. Order Eurodella, which translates to with tail, is made up of salamanders and newts. Order Anura, which translates to without tail, and is made up of frogs and toads. And finally, Order Apida, which translates to without feet, and is made up of Sicilians. Okay, let's hop to it then. Often confused with lizards, salamanders and newts make up our first order, Eurodella. Looking at these pictures of a lizard and a salamander, can you see any anatomical differences between the two? Yes, they have a similar body shape, long, slender bodies with tails. However, there are a few important differences. The most obvious difference is the skin. Lizards have rough, scaly skin, while salamanders have smooth, moist skin. Another difference you might have noticed is in the legs. Salamanders have legs that are all the same size and length. Lizards occasionally have slightly larger back legs. The cool thing about salamanders and newts is that they can regenerate legs when they are lost to a predator, like a lizard's tail. Wait, listen, do you hear that? If you have ever been near a freshwater lake, pond, or river at night, you've probably heard some cool animal noises. Chances are at least one of those noises was coming from a toad or a frog. Actually, it would have come from a male frog or toad. Males in order Anura, made up of toads and frogs, are the only amphibians with vocal sacs, and therefore the ability to make noise. Frogs and toads make up 90% of all amphibians, and can be found on every continent except Antarctica. But it's the frogs in the tropical rainforests of Central and South America that you need to keep an eye out for. 
That is where poison dart frogs live, and these animals are considered the most toxic and poisonous species on Earth. One frog can contain enough poison to kill 20,000 mice. Are you curious how predators know to leave these frogs alone? Think back to monarch butterflies. Their bright colors are huge do not eat me signs. Wow, look at that toad go! They are so fast and can travel so quickly across long distances. In fact, thanks to their strong back legs, they are able to jump distances up to 20 times their own body length. That would be the equivalent of you jumping the length of a basketball court. Since the world record for long jump is only 29 feet, if you could do that, I'm sure the NBA would be calling. Frogs and toads are often used interchangeably in common language, but there are actually some big differences between them. The main differences are in their skin and where they live. Frogs have smooth skin and spend more time in water, while toads have thicker skin and spend more time on land. So, next time you see a warty, thick-skinned amphibian at the park, you can confidently identify it as a toad. At first glance, you might look at these animals and think it is a snake or an earthworm, but in fact, they are Sicilians, which are amphibians from the order Apida. These unique animals are the only species in this order, and while they resemble earthworms and snakes, they have the thin, moist skin of amphibians. They lack limbs, which is where their name, which means without feet, comes from. As we went through the lesson today, we leaped into the world of amphibians. These slimy, sometimes poisonous, sometimes aquatic, and sometimes terrestrial creatures are a mix of characteristics of organisms from all different classes. They were the animals that started the transition from aquatic to terrestrial, and then the reptiles and mammals continued that evolution. In the PDF, we will look at why these animals are considered indicator species and learn more about their unique and interesting life cycle. In our next lesson, we will learn about our final group of animals, mammals. Until next time, remember that biology isn't just science, it's the way of life. See you next time. Hey, hey.